Hi Wanda, how you doing? Hi, Wanda. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you today? I'm good. 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 Glad to see you here. Okay. And we have this young lady. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, Hi. Charles. Hey. Uh, hey what, is, what is your name? Is it? It says Fount. F-O-U-N-T. Well, okay, it's Beverly Fontaine. Oh, okay. All right. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Hi everybody. Hi. Okay. Hello. All right. How you doing, John? And then we oh, got okay. Since the last time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna jump right in here. Um, I've got some things to show you and to share okay. with. You, okay. Um, and. Let's see. John, I guess we're going to start with you since you're here and you send in some artwork, okay? Okay. If that's all right with you. Fine. All right. And then hopefully other people will join us along the way here, okay? All right. That's not mine. No, that's not. That's <laughs> current. Wow. <laughs> but, but we're going to find yours, okay? It's that's good. pretty neat. Yeah, we like Okoyono. Is that Okoyono? No, that's uh, a gentleman's wife who oh. is a member of the group. That's Surin. Oh, okay. John. oh. all right. But we have oh, nice. now, John. That's me. <laughs> yep, that's you. And you wanted to talk about that. You sent it to me last week. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm still trying to play with foreground, background. Uh, intense and less intense. So I tried to make the bird in the background less intense than the branch in the foreground to mm -hmm. try to get a, a, an illusion of distance. So okay. that's what I'm trying to achieve. Okay. Well, guess what? Yes. It seems to be working somewhat for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, the bird definitely sits behind the branch. Okay. And the intensity of the color in both the leaves and the branch generally seems to be more intense. Okay. Okay. Um, now the thing that gets a little confusing to me is right in this area. Okay. Okay. Uh, because I'm, I'm assuming that this is behind the bird because it seems to be softer. That's what I was trying to do. Yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, but I'm not quite so sure what's going on here. I guess, is this coming towards you and this is the other part of it? Yeah, the correct. Right. Oh, okay. There's something not quite working about that. Right. I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it did. And mm, I think it's more of a drawing sort of issue. Right. Right. Uh, and being able to see this line either break way in front of there and then see that come out from behind it. Mm -hmm. and or to somehow connect this shape. So ah, okay. okay. Uh, you know, it seems to work okay here. Uh-huh. But yeah, this one. Okay. Yeah, not quite connected. Now, the other thing you might do is the value in here seems to be not as strong. And I, I know you want to move it back, but right. you've treated this a lot the way that you've treated the bird. Okay. You know, it doesn't have a harder outline. It doesn't have uh -huh. a contrast that you would expect because it's attached to this branch right here. Yes. Which has a lot of contrast and everything else attached to it does except for that. Okay. Okay. So you might just be able to 
you know, kick up the contrast right in here. Right. And tie those back together again. Okay. So that's kind of my thought on that. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see. Is that watercolors? What is that? This is watercolor, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You want to tell everybody a little bit about what this is and how you did it and you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> um, it was a picture that I found on the, on the web and I'd say I just uh, modeled the background. I, I sort of did, uh, tried to follow a technique you did when you were doing the, the lily, the, the, the one flower in your, uh, your pre your demonstration film. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. you filled in around, you filled in the background around it first. Mm -hmm. And then you went in and did the detail on the uh, the, the flowers and the leaf, and right. I was trying to do that, so I I did sort of the background first. Mm -hmm. The and background then I sort of worked it, yeah, the background that model yeah. model uh, effect there, and then uh, I just uh, I think I did the the bird, and then trying to keep it more muted, and then I. Did the branch in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so far, I mean, all of that seems to be working, you know, pretty well for you. Okay. Good. That's my that's my goal. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, the branch is definitely coming forward. Okay. That's Good. what you wanted. Right. Okay. And the only thing I would say about the bird is that you're getting really close on these darks, right in here. Uh -huh. Yep. To being as strong as what you've got along. Yeah, I did notice it as I put it back and looked at it. I did those, those spots that seem strong. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And so you, you might go back in and just, you know, wet them and then lift out a little bit of right. the contrast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then the bird would kind of hold together a little bit better. But okay. overall, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a nice little watercolor. How, how large was this? It's only a six by nine. It's small. Mm hmm Yeah. Do you tend to like to work smaller or do you or have you Yes, I do. In fact, yeah. <laughs> okay. I bought a couple of I got a couple of pads that I cut cut them in half and uh, use them smaller than uh, yeah. I'm not right now yet I'm still not real good into fine detail. Mm hmm And that's why I seem to find on a, a smaller scale I might I might possibly get a little more detail in. Mm, okay. See, I, I would, I would I argue the good. other way. I would yeah. say work larger. Okay. And that way you've, you've got the ability to get into those areas and do a little more. Okay. 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 Yeah. Very good. You might try one, you know, I mean, if, if this is like six by nine, you know, you yeah. might try one that's, you know, like a 11 by 14 or something. Like yeah. That. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, the only difference being is it's going to take more time, more work, just right. background. Right. But again, trying to get more accuracy and more, if you're looking for detail. Yes. Uh, such as the watercolor artist that I showed you. Uh, yes. Uh, Zhao, right. right. Uh, yeah. Zhao Goy or whatever. Anyway, she... Uh, you know, she worked really large. I mean, you know, those were like 40 and 60. Right, I recall yeah. that, right, yes. Yeah, and see, then when you photograph them, they come down and they look Correct, tight. right. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that well with a small piece. Right. Okay. So, anyhow. Um, okay. All right, so move it on. Thank you. All right, next, uh, I'm gonna pick on Eloise, okay? Are you here, Eloise? Saw you. Where'd you go? Uh, LC Wanda. All right, I'm looking for you. She was here just a while ago. She's muted. Oh, okay. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, take off mute. Yeah, she's down there. No, that's not Eloise. Can you hear me? I, thought, yep. I didn't know I was muted. Yep, you were. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, you sent in two things that I want to talk about, okay? We're going to start with your apple, okay? And 
the pictures don't look the same as my painting. They, the color is wrong and it's just several things. I get really frustrated because I, the picture just doesn't look the same. But anyway. Good. Well, well, I'm glad you brought that up. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, part of it might be uh, where you're photographing it. Okay. Um, usually when I take a photograph of artwork, what I'll do is I'll go out on like my back porch or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't have to have an area that's Brit, you know, like in direct sunlight. In fact, if you're sort of a little bit in the shade, that's fine. And, uh, you'll get better color saturation and things. And as you try to shoot your artwork, try to line your phone up so that it looks square in the frame. A lot of people are shooting stuff and it's kind of, you know, it's a slightly off angle, so it's not really square in the frame. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it distorts it when you do that. So it would be better if you just kind of, you know, move the phone around until you really get it square in your frame and then take the photo. And right. uh, like I said, I you know, usually, you know, daytime to go out and take a photograph of it, uh, you know, set it in a chair upright or whatever and just kind of bring your phone down so it's level with it. So you're not shooting above it, you're not shooting below it. You're just okay. trying to keep it square in the frame. Um, right. And so the outdoor, light is much stronger than probably anything you can get indoor okay right. um, but in looking at this and you know, when i did look at it uh you're getting much better those apples are beginning to feel kind of solid aren't they they look better they're still i've still got a long way to go though i notice well you, you've got to, good to me. <laughs> yeah, you got the basic concept. See, and that's the thing. Nice you know, the one. first couple that you did, you know, the placement of the values and things, not working quite so well. You know, this, you know, you look at it and it feels like a round apple. Now, how large did you paint that? Um, the apple, I guess, is about four or five inches okay. uh, tall. Okay. And I'm using an apple that's right beside uh, the easel. And okay. uh, I actually paint at night. Maybe that's part of my light problem. Uh, I, it depends on what your lighting is like in the studio, if you're painting at night. Uh, just make sure to have plenty of good light. Um, and the thing is, <clears throat> you need a light source that's on your canvas, but then oh. to make, you know, if the whole studio is lit up, then the apple's gonna look kind of flat because there's not really gonna be any directional shadows, right? So you need a, a light source on the apple, but then you need like a light source on your canvas as well, okay? Okay. Uh, and, and that way you've got a directional light you know, on the subject you're painting, but you can still see what you're doing. I know it's kind of tricky. Um, anyhow, let's uh, let's look at your painting where you're trying to put this all together. Yeah. Good. Wow. Yeah. And how large is this? It's eleven by fourteen, I think. Okay, so not really was... large. Yeah, not not a really large painting. Just okay. No. Um, well. Overall, your contrast and values are working really nicely. Uh, you know, your bottle and, the, you know, the actual light hitting it, everything feels like a highly reflective surface. You know, you got just a little bit of change in color, you know, from these darker edges into something that's slightly more translucent looking in the middle. And so it, it feels like glass and that feels pretty good. Uh, you know, your piece of ceramic over here looks pretty good. The cutting board, again, you know, you understand what it is. With the cutting board, uh, let me blow this up a little bit. 
you know, it's uh, was is the cutting board wood or is it? Yes, it's wood. Okay. This was on my countertop in the kitchen. Okay. Yes. All right. Do you do you see any kind of grain in the wood? <laughs> I don't on the painting. No, no. I'm just saying on the actual piece. Uh, I can't remember. I think there is some grain in it. Yeah, and it and it doesn't have to be like like real high contrast, but just mm -hmm. you know a, a little bit of brushwork to sort of suggest that there's some grain in it will make it read you know and feel more like wood. Okay, the uh, the handle of the knife you know works really well. You know the uh, the metal the the blade part is getting there. I, th I think you can use, a, with the way that you're showing highlights and things on the bottle, I'm mm -hmm. kind of thinking you're missing some highlights somewhere in that knife. Because again, okay. that's a really reflective object. Um, and so it's, it's gonna show some highlight in there somewhere. Now, your apple. Hmm, let's talk about your apple, okay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wow. so, a couple, so a couple of things, and I, and I'm assuming, and maybe I shouldn't do that. I'm assuming you're not finished with this, right? I don't know. I thought I was because I painted it a, some time ago. But as I look at it, I realize there's some things I need to do. So no, it's not uh, complete finished. Okay. All right. Well, I would agree with you on that one. Okay. Now, you know, since you've been painting apples and things, uh, you probably could look at this and figure out what's not quite working with it. And mm -hmm. for me, you've got these really bright highlights on it, right? Um, oh, yeah. And they look to be pretty much so straight white. Right. And we've kind of talked about highlights before. A highlight is never straight white, mm. okay? It's always gonna have some kind of color in it. Now it's gonna be very light, but it has to have some kind of color or value influence in it because white would represent like a light source, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so everything in the painting, unless it's a light source, has to be less than white, right? So okay. you're gonna add some kind of color or value to these and then they'll actually feel like they're part of the apple. In this case, I would put just a little bit of you know, either you could put a little bit of green, a little bit of red in them, you know, but just a tiny little touch. It's still going to look white, but, you know, or very, very light, but it will feel like it really belongs on that surface. And with the direction of your light, um, pull back. Um, I'm getting some... I'm getting some conflicting information here because when I look at the bottle and I look at the cast shadows on the wall, those definitely feel like the light is coming in from the left and from, you know, slightly above and from the left. Uh, and then when I look at the cutting board, the light source seems to be different. It seems more like it's directly either overhead for the apple because you, you've got some shadow under there. But then I look it's at a, the, Pardon? Excuse me, excuse me. It's a, from a ceiling fan and there are five different lights there surrounding the center of the ceiling fan. So mm -hmm. I think the light might be coming from different directions. Okay, all right. Yeah, because the knife, you seem to be casting a shadow forward and yet mm -hmm. it seems to be the only object in the painting that has the shadow on that side of the object. Because oh, okay. That, that doesn't happen that. over here. It doesn't happen on the bottle. We're not mm -hmm. sure about the apple quite yet. Mm -hmm. But that was the other thing I was going to say is that if this would have some kind of cast shadow in here, and then the same thing would be true with this glass. This glass, if this is going to be casting a shadow, the bottle is going to be casting a shadow on the wall. Well, that glass would as well. You would see some kind of cast shadow here. And then probably, you know, 
the same could be true with the tau. Now, okay. question. Okay. Is that, is that a, is, is the color and the pattern and everything on the tau, is yes, that part a, of the tau? Or is? Yes, it's a, it is. It's a dishcloth and it had a lot of uh, fruits. Those are grapes, I think. Right. In the, okay. And I don't have it lying, it's not lying like it's flat. Something's wrong. Well, and it, it doesn't have to lay flat. It seems like you've got it laid across and it's got a couple of folds in it. And that's fine. But uh, it's, you're right, it's not quite laying down yet. And, you know, this seems to work okay. It doesn't seem to move through this area and connect up to here. And somehow these have to change direction. See, these have to go vertically. This has to kind of lay down on that plane. Um, and they're not quite doing that yet. And it may, well, my guess is it's gonna be a change in value because uh -huh. you've got a lot more light hitting the surface that's laying flat and you're not, and then, you know, the value in here is probably appropriate because again, it's, it's turn and it's moving upward. So it's within kind of an area that's catching some shadow in there. So it's not gonna be as bright there, but from this point forward, somehow it's gotta get lighter. Wow, I didn't ever even think about that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, cause you're, well, you're trying to tell somebody that this piece of fabric that has a pattern on it isn't a, isn't laying flat on the table. It's got folds in it. And so as that pattern moves around those folds, you have to kind of consider how much light is hitting like the top of this. And you seem to have a bit of an indication of that, but then from here over, it's all kind of the same. I see. It, can't, it can't be if it's moving, you know, with that surface, okay? Right, right, thank you. So, yeah, so I want you to go back and look at that for a little bit more, okay? Will do, thank you. All right, um, okay. And then Jean, uh, Jean submitted this, and uh, this was a, a painting that she had done on a piece of wood. And uh, from what I understand, it's oil paint, right? You there, Jean? Here, let's unmute you. Okay. All right. Yeah. So this was done in oil, right? No, this is acrylic. Oh, it okay. oh. With a little bit of palette knife. Okay. All right. It has. It has. Palette knife. Yeah. It has. I a emulate oils. I can't use the oils. Right. Yeah. I I, I remember you saying that. Yes. Um, but yeah, this this has. It it almost looks like oil paint. You know, it's, it's got that kind of painterly sort of feel to it, which right. is really nice. Um, that was my experiment. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's a nice experiment. I guess the question being, now, uh, you put it on a piece of plywood or something. No, it's a one piece of wood. I don't know what kind of wood it is. It's a mm -hmm. small piece. It's like a six by eight or something in that. Uh, and it has a... Uh, two holes drilled in it with a hanging piece of uh, leather, you know, like a shoelace leather. Okay. And it was a, uh, a piece of one of our dogs that passed away. Okay. Right. Well, I like the way it's painted. How, how, uh, how long ago did you paint that? This, is, this has been about 10 years ago now. Oh, okay. I, I, I've switched from watercolor to pastels to acrylics and I, I keep switching back and I have to re teach myself how to do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, in looking at it, the range of value, you know, works really well. I mean, where the lights and the darks are. Right. And you were pretty successful at kind of capturing kind of a, kind of an emotion or a, a sense of who the dog was. Right. 
So and that works really well. You know, the change in value of this ear back here in shadow sits it back. You know, this one having more contrast brings it forward. So overall, I mean, the, the painting is working really, really well. Um, the only thing I would say about it is if it were me, I would probably try to calm some of the background down a bit because it's, it's very similar in approach and technique to the dog. And if the dog is the focal point, then... That needs you know, to be calmed down. Yeah, I would, I would leave this the way it is, but I would kind of just soften that just a little. I'm not saying take it away or anything or right. change the color. Just, you know, don't make it quite as busy. And then the dog will actually stand out more for you, okay? Okay, great. Thank and that you. way you focus, you know, really on the subject. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Sure. Um, let's. Betty, you sent this one in. We kind of talked about it. Let's see. Yeah. Unmute you. All right. We kind of talked about this last week a little bit. Uh, you want to tell everybody a little bit about this? Um, it's one I started um, from an actual, the uh, actual object, and then I took a picture of it, which, uh, and went back to it later to work on it quite a bit later, and the picture was not too good. So I had to kind of guess some and, um, just tried to feel the flow of the light and the darks. So that was my main purpose was kind of like a value study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about this a little bit last week, so I'm not going to say anything that you haven't heard already, but uh, for everybody else, the thing I, I kind of like about this piece is that the actual subject, is very high contrast, you know, very strong lights, very strong darks, and some some nice a nice range of value in between. Uh, but it feels really kind of monochromatic. And then in the background, where normally, you know, you would think you would want to get more neutral and uh, you know get it to you know. In, in thinking about it, you would think that those neutral colors would sit back. Uh, her intensity of the color and everything is much brighter, but the contrast, you know, in value is pretty close together. You know, it all seems to be kind of about a middle value. And it works really well to, it still sits back behind the actual statue, and yet, it makes that painting have a little more life and warmth to it. And it's, you know, it's a nice piece. And I, I like the way that you varied your colors in here. And it's not just, you know, one flat monoton monotonous, can't talk this afternoon, sorry, uh, monotonous, you know, color. So there's some interest back there. You know, the piece itself, the actual statue's got nice movement and stuff through it. Um, and then you did a really, really nice job, you know, putting a frame on it. And the frame works really well with it as well. So, so good job. Thank you. How about that? Okay. Uh, I see June here. Let's see. Yes, okay. June sent in a uh, drawing. Okay. So Ted, June, let's see if we can unmute you. All right, so June, tell us a little bit about, about your drawing. This is copy you. Oh, you're trying to copy Roger. that French, oh, okay, I see. Okay, all right. Well, she has a little different look to her, okay. <laughs> yeah. she, uh, okay. But it's a, it's a nice drawing. Um, the one thing I'd say is if you had either some white pastel or a little bit of chalk, 
you know, you could come in and you could push the highlights, like, you know, at the end of the nose or maybe on the cheek or the forehead, just a little bit. And that would give you a little more contrast. Uh, the other thing is you could, uh, you know, darken, where'd you go? You could darken the hair overall. Uh -oh. uh, and again, giving the drawing a little more contrast. So. Okay. Okay. But. Okay. Okay. Nice drawing. You know. Thank you. Uh, now, one thing, you see the line down here on the nose. Okay. And yes. here in the eyes and everything. Okay. All of that works pretty well. But then you get over here to this cheek, right? And you have this mm -hmm. really sharp dark outline and okay. what I would do is I would kind of encourage you to take your finger or just take a like a, a stump and just blend that back just a little bit okay so it's not okay so it's not as sharp or as dark in value and that will get that cheek to begin mm -hmm. to move back for you okay okay yeah because you wouldn't really with as much light as is right in this area, I don't think you uh -huh. see the outline of that quite that dark, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, I also wanted to, here, I wanted to share this. This is Larry's. Uh, Larry's doing some wood carving, okay? And he's got a female figure. And now this is on a, I don't know, Larry, how big is this? Let's unmute him so he can talk here. 12 by, 12 by eight. Okay, so it's about eight wide, 12 high. So it, it's not a real large piece, but you know, when you're, when you're carving, you have to keep in mind that what you're doing is you're cutting away from the surface to lower the surface so that the figure can actually come out. And so you can see where he's carved in, you know, in this area, you know, lowering this and letting the outline of the figure come out. Now, how, how much further are you going to go on this, Larry? Uh, quite a bit more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, you're getting deep enough, like right along the edge of the figure. Um, that you can go back in, you can start softening that outline and rounding that out a little bit and, and really build up some of the form of the figure. But, uh, you I'm know- I'm waiting to kind of get with you on kind of what to do next. Okay. The left leg I've already sanded it down and it's starting to round over. Yeah, this one right here? Yeah, on the left side, it's already starting to round over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can see that a bit. It's still catching. This seems still like, you know, a, a pretty sharp, abrupt edge right through here. Um, you know, in this area right in here, it seems to be softening right across there. But down here by the ankle, I think you can maybe go a little bit further. And then I'm trying to, wood, when I do my wood carving, mm -hmm. I get my, um, my, my elbow gets tendonitis. Yeah. yeah. So I've kind of been holding back for a while. Okay. Have you, uh, have you got like a Dremel tool or something like that? Yeah, I did, but um, I didn't get all the cutting edges that I wanted and they didn't have them mm -hmm. at uh, Lowe's that I, I went to. Okay. I got to go somewhere else to find more variety. Okay. All right. Well, uh, what I would say is if, if you got a Dremel tool, just get one of those little round, you know, spindles with the, the sandpaper on it. And of course, you're going to have to work very slowly and very lightly on it. But, you know, little at a time, you can begin to round that out a little bit. Okay. But before you get into rounding that out, here where you've got this deeper area cut, uh, I would try to transition that a little more softly so that it doesn't make such a strong outline around the figure, okay? 
It's kind of funny about that right side. If you see, kind of the light is hitting from the left side. Yeah. So does that trench look really deep? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, like, from this point out to about right there, just try to, you know, transition that, you know, so that it's not as abrupt. Okay. I'll give it a shot. And then it will be less distracting and the figure will stand out more. Okay. Um, let's see who else and what we're down to a whole four minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I know we run out of time fast on these things. Uh, anybody got any questions about anything they've seen or any comments? I see that you got a sailor with a hat on there. Oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk about him. <laughs> All right. Uh, did you have a question, Charles? Can yeah. you hear me? I'm Beverly. Yeah, Beverly. I did send you a picture. You did. Yes, to Charles Goggins um, at Fulton County. If that was the right address. It's well. It's Charles. Dot Scoggins, S C O G I N S, right at Fulton County GA dot gov. Yes, that's what I sent it to. Hmm. Okay. When did you send it? Last week. Oh, okay. Last week. Okay. What was it? Can you jog it my? It was a. It's it's a picture. It's it's um. A, a picture <laughs> it's a face and then it has like other faces coming out of it and it has a flower orange flower in the middle hmm. I don't remember that um could you could you send that again to me yes I will okay all right make sure you got all the dots in the right places yeah yeah it, it, those dots it won't go yeah okay yeah so it's Charles dot Scoggins at Fulton County GA.gov. Okay. That's how I sent it. But I'll send it again. Okay, yes, yeah, you would. Because I, I yeah, I, I don't remember seeing it. Um so uh and have you you've sent me something before, haven't you? No, that was my first time. That was your first time. Yes. Okay. All right. Um all right, we'll try sending it again. And we'll do. and let's Let's see. And is it a painting? Yes, it's a painting. It has like an orange flower in the middle and a head coming out of it. Okay. All right. Well, if you'll send that to me and then on Wednesday, uh, we'll be talking about paintings and I'll try to pull it up and we'll try to take a look at it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, now, yeah, I've got like less than a minute. Okay, <laughs> we're running out. So anyway, let me just say thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm, I'm glad everybody made it. And um, like I said, we will be back here on Wednesday uh, at 10 a.m. And that's the, uh, the painting and mixed media. And I'm gonna try to have some information on working as you know, not just with oil paint, but, you know, as a mixed media piece, okay? And 10, 10 or 11? Uh, it, oh, 11, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 11 o'clock, all right. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of walk you through a, a mixed media process, okay? okay. Sound good? Thank you. Okay, Thank thanks, you Rose. Much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, until Bye. then. You guys have a great week, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Charles, you also. Bye, everybody. You. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Claudia. Bye. <laughs> Bye, little John. Bye, big John. <laughs> Bye, John boy. Bye, boy. Bye, family. Yeah. Fellow, fellow artists, goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Yeah, it gets down to a man and says, oh, you have less than a minute, but it doesn't tell you exactly how much of less than a minute you do have okay so okay. <laughs> seems to, so, that last minute seems to be kind of long doesn't it oh yeah so he says we'll all say goodbye eloise jane heart spirit 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got a pretty good group yeah. here today. We had we had uh, fourteen people. So. <clears throat>